Hey, James Kingsley here. I'm going to walk through this uh, new feature in Captivate that allows you to create while loops. Um, this video is to augment the blog post that's over at elearnbrothers.com. So let's jump right in. Um, on this slide, I've already created two uh, variables, a counter and run counter. And I've got a couple of buttons set up on there. <clears throat> but first, let's take a look at the, the main thing that's going on, which is this count up advanced action that I have. Uh, so when the slide loads, we start this advanced action called count up. I'll jump in here and take a look at that. And you can see that right now I have a pretty simple here. Um, I'm using the new while, so you can see that's in there. And I'm saying while run counter is equal to one, which is the default value that I have set up for it. Then while it's equal to one, we want to increment that counter by one. Now Captivate is going to run this loop um, about every second. So essentially what we're creating here is a timer that's going to count up every second. Um, it's going to add one to that. So let's uh, publish that or preview that real quick so you can just kind of see how that's working. And the cool thing is it's going to keep counting up even when the timeline ends or is paused. So you can see my counter is running here. Timeline's over, nothing else happening on the screen or on the timeline, but it's just going to keep running that loop and adding one to my counter every time. Now I have added some other buttons on there so that I can actually pause that if I want, and then I can start it again. So this is our variable that's determining whether or not the while loop should be running. And so when I pause it, I flip that to zero. And then when I start it, I flip it back to one. And then I also have a, a more complicated one on here where I'm resetting it. So I hit reset, and you can see that it flipped uh, that to zero, restarted it, and uh, flipped it to one on there. We'll go back and we'll take a look at how I built those. So the, uh, the pause button actually is, is pretty straightforward. So I just have a button on there. It has a, a simple action that assigns the value of our run counter to zero. And as you recall, that, uh, that while loop, let me come back into it. That while loop is watching run counter. And as long as it's equal to one, it's going to keep incrementing this. So as soon as we change that value by clicking that button, as soon as we change it to zero, then um, this while loop is going to stop running. It's the next time that the loop comes through, uh, it's going to see that, that that variable is not equal to one, and it's going to exit the loop and not run it again. Um, so since it's not running it again, then um, we need a way here. Um, it's not as simple as just changing the variable back to zero, because since we've exited the loop, it's, it's, not, it's not going to reevaluate that again. The, the next, it's not going to run a second later to reevaluate it. So we need a way to, um, to set it and uh, start checking again. And so this is where I got a little, a little crazy here. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing I do is I assign the counter uh, with one again, so that our while loop um, will evaluate to true the next time it runs. But then I got to get it to run. And so what I did there, uh, let me jump back over. Um, I have this invisible click box on the screen that's running the same count up uh, action that we did um, when the, we entered the slide. And so um, I'm, I'm using this because um, I have another blog post that talks about how you can actually use JavaScript to trigger advanced actions in Captivate. So let me jump back over to this one. Sorry, all the jumping back around, back and forth. Um, but you'll get this sample file when you go over to the blog post. You can download this sample file and take your time and look at these um, at your leisure. So the, uh, the trick here is, it is basically calling some JavaScript to fake a click on that click box. So I'm assigning the counter to one, the, the run counter. Uh, to one, and then I'm clicking that box to start the counter running again to, to get the count up uh, advanced action to run again. 
so that is how I start it again after it's been paused. Um, the reset one um, uses some of the same triggers in there, um, but I added this delay by one second. So let me just walk through the, the actions on this trigger um, and hopefully uh, I can explain why, why I added that. So the first thing we're doing is we're setting one counter to zero. That's to stop the while loop. So the next time it comes through, remember about every second, it's going to come through and it's going to see, oh, run counter is not equal to one anymore. So stop, stop running that. Then since I'm trying to reset the actual uh, number that, that's being countered up here, the counter, then I'm, I'm going to set that to zero again, which was the default value, right? And now uh, what I've had to do is I've had to put a delay in of one second. And that's because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the counter, the variable to run the counter. We're going to set it back to one. And then we're going to, again, call our advanced action to start the while loop. All right. um, the reason for the delay is that all of this, in theory, could happen in less than the time it takes that while loop to come around again. So I could have... Um, told it to stop running the next time, but it doesn't evaluate that until the next time it comes through. I've reset the counter, and then I'm going to tell it, oh, okay, it's safe to run it again, and I'm going to kick it off again. Um, if I don't pause there, then what could happen uh, in theory, and, and I've seen it happen, which is why I came in and put it in here, is all of these actions could run in less than one second, which means that that while loop, which is only running every one second, um, would never stop. And since we're triggering it to run here, we would actually end up with two uh, while loops running uh, instead of stopping one and starting a new one there. So that's how those work. Um, I think I still have the preview up for that. Yes. So oh, we're up to 304 now. So there's the reset. And pause. And start on there. Awesome. Uh, the next video we'll talk about how to create a um, use this while loop to make an arrow spin.